There are some Warzone 2 settings which no one really knows about or pays much attention to that can improve your game massively and you need to change them right now. Some of what I'm about to share has been mentioned in previous settings videos, but quite a lot of it hasn't. So if you have seen all of my previous settings videos or you're brand new here, you're gonna take some very important stuff away. And we're going to start with a setting that's very important for your movement. For this, we need to go into controller settings and go to invert, slide and dive behavior. This is under movement behaviors in the settings, but if you can't find this or any of the other settings I'm gonna mention, you can actually just use the search feature, which is now available on console and PC. But anyway, for this setting, we actually want to turn it on inverted. So obviously on Warzone 1, slide cancelling was a huge deal for your movement and you basically felt like you had to do it all the time, so for that, tap to slide helped you a lot. However on Warzone 2, I'm sure you've noticed, slide cancelling and sliding in general really doesn't help you. And in fact, most people actually find themselves diving more than they're sliding. And if this is the case for you, you absolutely want the setting on inverted. Once it's on inverted, you just have to tap to then dive across, but you can still slide by holding on to the button. And this can give you a little bit of an advantage when playing because you can do your movement mechanic, i.e. diving, that little bit quicker. Next up, we've got in... Next up, we've got interact and reload behavior. Thankfully on Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2, we have the prioritize feature. So instead of choosing whether to tap to interact or tap to reload, we can now prioritize what's important to us. And on Warzone, looting is way more frequent than reloading, so we want this on prioritize interact. For Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, you'll probably want this on prioritize reload. By having prioritize interact on, when you tap your reload or interact button, you're going to interact with an item, or you can hold it to reload. So this makes looting infinitely quicker when you're running around, but I would say if you haven't ran this setting before, then watch out when you're traveling in vehicles and going to reload. I've seen a lot of people jump out of choppers this way. Remember, you can still reload, you just have to hold on to your button. Now we move on to parachute auto deploy. I'm sure many of you have already turned this off, but it's surprising how many people just leave this on default, which is on. We want to turn this off, and this is all to do with our first jump off the plane in Warzone. So obviously, when we're flying towards the ground at the start of the game, we want to drop before anyone else does. And by turning this off, we actually get the chance to do that. This is simply because the auto deploy kicks in quite high off the ground, but manually you can pull your shooter a lower height. It might just be a few meters, but that adds up to a few seconds, and then you can get loot before someone else and be ready for them to drop, getting some early game kills and surviving. Okay, now we want to move all the way down to advanced interface settings and go down to center dot and switch this on. In terms of the scale and the size that you want, that doesn't matter too much, that's a personal choice, but for center dots, I absolutely recommend turning this on. This will help you with your centering and be ready for gunfights at almost any moment. And just to explain what centering actually is, it's ensuring that your crosshairs in the very center of your screen where you're gonna shoot are lined up to where enemies are likely to be. Now for many people, they end up kind of looking down on the ground running around like this maybe for loot. But really you want to be up here. This is where people are gonna be, and by having that center dot, that helps a lot, particularly if you're stunned or flashed, it helps you get a little bit of orientation. Just before we get into the rest of the settings, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Sihu, and their gaming and office ergonomic chairs, particularly the M57. They sent me one of these chairs to try out, and I've gotta say, I love it. I feel like a lot of gaming chairs are more style over substance, whereas this chair feels more like style and substance. Obviously the chair looks great, but when see who say ergonomic, they really mean it. It's so comfortable and allows hours upon hours of sitting on it without getting uncomfortable. For me, I do a full-time research job at my desk, then play Warzone and do YouTube here as well, so I really needed a chair that can support that, and see who's absolutely does. It's no surprise that it is recommended by Ergonomics Application Association, and the actual design is based on a human body dynamic digital model. So you're gonna be comfortable and looking after your body. And then on top of being super comfortable, it also has loads of adjustable elements to personalize it to you. So we've got the adjustable headrest, adjustable lumbar support bracket, adjustable 
arm rests, and then a back rest adjustment that can go from 90 degrees to 126. And then of course you've got the height adjustment too. If you are interested in see who's M57 ergonomic chair, or any of their chairs for that matter, you can follow the link down in the description to their website or their Amazon store, or even their Instagram. And if you use their discount code on Amazon or head over to their website right now, you can get 40% off as part of their Christmas offer. But be sure to act fast, as this does end on the 31st of December. Now let's get back to the settings. With this next setting, we're going to drastically reduce the amount of visual recall you get. With FOV, you kind of want to go as high as you can manage. I've gone all the way up to 120. But then as we go to ADS field of view, I've got mine on affected. This basically means that when we aim in, we keep the field of view that we've actually put our settings on. So if we're on 120 FOV and we aim in, we're still on 120 FOV. And because this is kind of zoomed out from the default setting, you do get less visual recoil. Whereas if you had independent on, you'd zoom into the standard, which is 80 FOV. Now, obviously this does have some advantages. If an enemy is really, really far away, you'll be able to see them easier. But for most gunfights most of the time, affected is going to be the best setting for you. Then on top of that, I highly recommend changing your weapon field of view as well, and I've got mine on wide. This makes the weapon look as small as possible, so you can see more on your screen. It's a subtle little setting, but ultimately does help your overall game. Next up, we have some mounting behaviors, which are going to help us just get shot less. So we have the weapon mount movement exit. We still want to keep this on, but we want to actually change the delay to short. This just means that when we're mounted up and shooting someone, we can get out of there that little bit quicker. Sometimes you may have noticed that when you're mounted up and you try and leave, it feels kind of like you're stuck on the wall a little bit. Well, if you put it on short, it's not going to feel like that. Now we move on to our HUD settings, or safe area as it's also called. So the instinct with this is to push the boundaries right to the edge of your screen like I have here. However, really we want to reduce it a little bit here and there, particularly if you are on larger monitors or you sit really close to your monitor. And the reason for this is, obviously your HUD has very important information on, particularly the minimap in the top left corner. So if you're running around the map or you're set up somewhere, but you want to keep looking at your minimap, maybe you've got a UAV on or someone shooting in the area. Well, if the HUD is fully spread out like it is here, you're going to have to track all the way to the top left then down to the middle, and there's a chance that you miss someone or just react slower to someone appearing. This has definitely happened to me, and I don't have a huge monitor. So by reducing our safe area and our hood, it means that we have closer access to that minimap. It may look a little uglier for some people and take a little bit of getting used to, but it's definitely worth it. And actually, many pros reduce their hood for just this reason. So now you can check your minimap, but still keep a keen eye on what's actually in front of you. Finally, we're talking about color customization, and you're not going to be able to believe how useful these settings are. So first up, just to get your game looking prettier, you want to put this on filter 2, and put the intensities all the way up to 100, and put the target on both. This just makes the game look prettier and less dull and drab. This is great, but it's actually not the most important setting we're going to cover here. For that, we need to go down to the interface element colors and go down to neutral. If you've played a fair amount of Warzone 2 now, you probably know that when your teammates ping somewhere, it's kind of hard to see. This is really frustrating and just slows down you and your team, and can even get you killed. Well, the pings done by your teammates actually come under this neutral option under the interface element colors. So the default is white, and there's no wonder it's so hard to actually see when they do ping. But as you can see, we can actually change it to anything we want. So maybe we don't want to interact it with an enemy being pinged, but maybe pink would be nice, much easier to see on the map, everyone's clear on what's going on. So a lot of these settings are super subtle, but also super useful, and I hope they've helped you out. But you've got to tell me, are there any important settings that I've missed? If so, get in the comments and tell me. And be sure to check out these full settings videos for Warzone 2 if you haven't already.